Hey, how's it going everyone? It's Nate here from One For All Hockey. This is kind of a channel I'm starting. It's my first video and this channel is basically all things hockey for all kinds of hockey fans. In today's video, I'm going to be looking at the Artemi Panarin contract. So I'm probably going to go on to cap friendly here and click on this. Just kind of doing this live, not really cutting it together. So Artemi Panarin, New York Rangers. Is he number 10? Is that what that is? I don't know. I didn't know that. Hands up if you knew that. But uh, he's a right-handed shot. He's 27 years old. And this average is going to be $11.6 million per year for the cap hit. And uh, the cap hit percentage of 14.28%. Now, you're not saying anything... Oh, yeah, and it's also for seven years. And you're not saying anything that people don't already know when you say, you know, this, this is an overpayment. Uh, I think the most... Most hockey fans know, even really casual ones, kind of like myself. I've been a little bit more than casual these past two years, which is why I'm doing this channel. And I think everyone kind of knows consensus on this contract is that it is a little bit too much money. I don't think the value is that far off, honestly. I, I think you've got a really good guy here um, in Panarin, obviously, which is why the Rangers were willing to fork over so much money and such a long term for that. I mean, they gave him seven years. I think Columbus was going to offer him eight. That was their comparative advantage in the deal. But I think myself included, like most players in the NHL and most of us, I think we would rather play in a huge market like New York City rather than Columbus, Ohio. But we're going to be looking at Artemi Panarin's uh, stats just to see how far off in value is this cap hit for him 11.6 it's a lot of money maybe we're going to compare him to a couple other players maybe not we may not get into that but i like to use nhl.com i know a lot of people like hockey reference or a couple other things but the nhl.com even though sometimes the uh the data here is slightly off if it's like a really um if it's a new season and a couple games were just played or whatever sometimes they get things wrong but for the most part it's pretty good and i really like the presentation so here's his NHL career. He's got 322 games played and 320 points. He's right around a point per game uh, player. And he's got 116 goals and 204 assists, which would kind of suggest he's a bit of a playmaker. And he, I think that's definitely his role. He's kind of, a, I would describe him as a bona fide playmaker who can also shoot the puck. And that's that's nothing. Uh, that's not a new thought. It's kind of a accepted thought. So in 2015, 2016, he's got 30 goals, 47 assists for 77 points with the Chicago Blackhawks. 80 games played. In 2016, 2017, he's got 82 games played, 31 goals, 43 assists. Really similar totals for 74 points. In 2017, 2018, he's plays, he plays 81 games with Columbus Blue Jackets, gets 27 goals, bit of a drop off there, but 55 assists, which is a career high in assists for also a career high in points of 82. So definitely more of a playmaker role there as before. I mean, he was always a playmaker, but just a little bit more so in Columbus. Um, obviously playing with Patrick Kane, you're probably gonna net a couple more goals than you are playing with line mates like the Columbus Blue Jackets had uh, that season. In 2018 and 2019, this most recent season, he had 79 games played. He's got 28 goals, 59 assists, tons of assists, but scoring was up these past two years for 87 points of plus 14. He's overall plus 63, uh, which is pretty nice. Um, but he's also got a bunch of power play goals here you know he can score on the on the power play you know he's obviously not an Alex Ovechkin power play specialist but he's some guy you can definitely put on your first second line power play he'll definitely be playing that first line power play for the Rangers and here's how I would put this contract to me this is how I think of the Panarin contract your team doesn't get worse by adding Panarin that being said if a team had to give up a bunch of um, roster players, maybe they would. But here's a player who's maybe a lot of people don't think is a really comparable player, but I think he is. And maybe this is 
and I'm getting ready for all the people in the comments to uh, flag me for this. But I think a really comparable player is Phil Kessel. And if we just look at Phil Kessel's stats, he's around the same age, he's 31. So he's a bit older than Panarin, who is, I think he's like 27 or 28. Um, but Phil is a couple years older and he's right about point per game too, maybe a little less so than Panarin, but he's got 823 points and 996 NHL games played. And if we look at these stats, um, a, a bit lower starting out, actually a lot lower starting out. Um, so does that mean Panarin's ceiling is higher? Who knows? I don't know. It's not like he's a 20 year old player and we don't know what he can do. We kind of know what he can do. He's a, basically a bona fide point per game maybe 80 85 points a season kind of player something like 30 goals 50 assists seems to be his wheelhouse but if you look at a phil kessel specifically when he goes to pittsburgh he's got 26 goals 33 assists in 2015-16 23 goals 47 assists 34 goals 58 assists for that career high of 92 and then 27 and 55 for 82 points you know kessel is one of those guys where he plays almost every game like Panarin you see he has one two three four five six seasons where he didn't miss a game uh and then there's the lockout where he didn't miss a game that lockout season and then he's got like nine seasons where he didn't miss a game and Panarin is very similar in that he's not super injury prone um so they're really comparable there and they're also comparable in that maybe Kessel's a bit lower with some of these totals some of them are higher we don't know obviously Panarin's not as proven yet but Kessel's more of a, uh, a bona fide 30 goal scorer, whereas Panarin, looking at these stats, he's kind of a bit more, eh, he's actually right around the 30 goal score as well with a bit more assists. And if you look at Kessel's contract, and I'm not gonna pull it up, but Kessel's contract, um, Toronto's retained, but it was something like eight mil a year. And I know that was signed a couple, a couple years ago now, actually a, a long time ago now. Uh, but his cap hit when he was playing in Pittsburgh was something like six and a half million dollars a year, maybe 6.8 million. And for Panarin to get almost double that for just marginally better production, I don't know. I know it's the new NHL. Um, I, don't, I, I don't know. I just don't know what to say about it. It's definitely, definitely, definitely a an overpayment if you look at matt duchene who got i think he got like eight mil a year i think that's a really fair contract i don't know i think 11 mil a year 11.6 mil a year for seven years for a player who if we take a look at his stats again has never hit 90 points I don't know it seems like a lot especially when you have a player like phil kessel and i know phil has a lot of attitude issues or whatever but i don't know that doesn't seem to be a player's opinion that seems to be a coach and gm opinion he seems to be pretty popular amongst the players i think the problem with phil and that's a discussion for another time he kind of runs into the problem of maybe he's a bit more light-hearted in the locker room maybe not as serious likes to have fun in his off time I don't know, maybe that's a problem. Uh, obviously he does have a, some of that attitude on the bench we see in games, but to me, it just seems more like passion. I don't know. Again, it's impossible for someone like me to say, but if you look at Kessel as a 30 year old, he put up 92 points, making $6.8 million a year, which is much higher than what Panarin put up that season. It's a full 10 more points higher and let's see the goals 34 and 27 seven more goals 10 more points higher i don't know uh i mean it's not, like i said it's not like panarin's 20 years old or 21 he's 27 i think he's kind of the player he's gonna be i think he's that 80 85 point guy uh maybe a little bit less probably 75 to 90 is his wheelhouse um, and I probably said a different number earlier in the video, but all this is to say, I think we can all agree. It's a bit of an overpayment. I think I probably like him. Com a complete fair value is probably 10, five, maybe 
11 flat, I don't know, 11 is just a lot. 11 just seems so much to me. I mean, you got guys like Kucherov making way less, Crosby making way less, Malkin making way less, Kane making less. McDa is McDavid making less? McDavid's probably making just a bit more. I don't know the McDavid contract off the top of my head, but it's a really similar cap hit. I don't know. Definitely an overpayment for Panarin. He's a stellar player, an absolute stellar player. You've got a great guy in Panarin. Are the Rangers going to regret this trade when it comes time to sign a couple of these guys like a Capo Caco, depending on how he pans out? I don't know. All that is to say, if I had to give this trade or not trade this signing a grade, I'd probably give it a B plus. You know, I think they got the biggest name free agent this summer on their team. So it's hard to call it a loss and give it a bad grade for that reason. But it is a bit of an overpayment. I think it's an overpayment of about a million and a half a year. I like him at 10. I don't know. So thank you guys so much for watching. This is my first video. Let me know if you want me to do any other uh, contract reviews, things like that in the future, any sort of discussions. And I'll see you guys next time.